Now we have Michaela Stokes. She is a fifth year GD and D student in Dr. Lee Krause's lab. Michaela told us that she grew up on a small island in Southeast Alaska. Her talk is a new regulatory component of fat cell development. Okay, so obesity is increasing um, more and more all the time. It's actually projected that in America, more than half of Americans are going to be obese by 2030. And this is really important because obesity actually increases the risk of a number of other diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even reproductive diseases and disorders. Um, and in total, it's estimated that obesity costs the U.S. healthcare system $190 billion a year, making it really important that we try to understand obesity and how it's contributing to these diseases. So <clears throat> when we're taking in more energy than we're burning, we have to store it somehow, and we store it in the form of fat. And there's two ways we can do this. We can take the fat cells that we have and make them a little bit bigger, or we can signal to these pre-fat cells that we have stored away and we can say, hey, we need you, develop into a mature fat cell. And when this happens, those cells are able to kind of share the load or share the burden and they function very efficiently, making it really important that we try to understand what regulates going from these pre-fat cells to these mature fat cells. And if you think about it, they're two totally different cell types. They have totally different functions and they have different machinery that allows them to perform those functions. And so one way that we can regulate changes like this in a cell is through transcription factors, these proteins that go and bind to DNA at very specific locations and they turn on very specific sets of genes. And so throughout fat cell development, CBP beta is known as the pioneering transcription factor. It's the first one to turn on, it binds to the promoter of PPAR gamma, and through doing this, it turns on a cascade of all of these genes that these cells need in order to perform that function as a mature fat cell. So I found through screening various other proteins that PARP7 um, was required for fat cell development. If you don't have PARP7, your fat cells are unable to develop into mature fat cells. And so in asking why, I did a number of experiments that showed that PARP7 is actually binding to CBP beta, this pioneering transcription factor. And not only are these proteins bound together, but these proteins are found together at the location of, the, of PPAR gamma's promoter. When this happens, PPAR gamma is able to turn on, and subsequently all the other genes turn on as well, allowing these cells to build the machinery that allows them to become these mature fat cells. Um, when we don't have PARP7, we no longer see CBP beta, beta able to bind to the promoter of PPAR gamma. And consequently, we don't see any of these genes turn on. We don't see these cells able to build the machinery that would allow them to function as a mature fat cell, and they're stuck in this pre-fat cell state. And we think this is really exciting um, because this is the first time we've shown PARP7 playing a role in um, the development of fat cells. And not only is it this new regulatory component of fat cell development, but we think that through understanding these components of fat cell development, we can better understand how our fat tissue works, how it's regulated, how it's then dysregulated during obesity, how that contributes to these various other diseases. And hopefully through finding these specific mechanisms, we can find ways in which we can combat these effects uh, of obesity on these other diseases and try to save the healthcare system that $190 billion a year.